Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Guba. I am the general medicine educator. In this session, I will do a quick recap on this very important topic in the endocrinology that is hypothyroidism. So, first and foremost, the very important question is, what is the most common cause for the hypothyroidism? The most common cause for hypothyroidism, it's an autoimmune condition that is Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Hashimoto's disease. So here, what exactly happens is the antibodies are being formed. It's an autoimmune disease, right? The antibodies are formed against the thyroid follicular cells. And the name of these particular antibodies are the antimicrosomal antibodies. We also have the antibodies against the TSH receptors. And we also have the antibodies against the thyroglobulin. <clears throat> and this is also the most common cause of the goitrous hypothyroidism. So there will be painless enlargement of the gland in these patients with the Hashimoto's. And this is the most common cause of hypothyroidism, particularly in India. Whereas globally, if you take the most common cause of hypothyroidism is iodine deficiency. Now, what are the other causes of the hypothyroidism? The other causes of hypothyroidism, they include post-ablative surgery or the radioactive iodine. So, the in, for example, you take the individual is having a large goiter that is causing the compressive symptoms like dysphagia, dyspnea and hoarseness of voice. So, in such case, we will do the surgical resection of the thyroid gland resulting in the hypothyroidism. And radioactive iodine, that is Iodine 131 is used in the treatment of hyperthyroidism, but if it is used in excessive doses that can make the individual to land up in permanent hypothyroidism. And the other causes are heritable biosynthetic defects and the iodine deficiency. These are the other causes of hypothyroidism. And you have to know, this is a very very important question in your exams, what are the drugs which will cause the hypothyroidism? So we have a big list of drugs. And these drugs include number one, lithium used in the treatment of bipolar disorders, acetyl salicylic acid, right, which is an NSI, amidurone, which is a class three anti arrhythmic drug, interferons used in the treatment of your multiple sclerosis, sulfonamides, right, which are your antibiotics. So these are the drugs which are used in the, sorry, which will cause the hypothyroidism. Now, you need to understand what do you mean by the word secondary and as well as the tertiary hypothyroidism. See, secondary means the pathology is at the level of the anterior pituitary gland where there is a decrease in the TSH. Whereas tertiary means the pathology is at the level of hypothalamus where there is decrease in the thyroid releasing hormone. So, pituitary gland induced hypothyroidism will be secondary hypothyroidism and hypothalamic induced hypothyroidism will be the tertiary hypothyroidism. So this is about your secondary and tertiary hypothyroidism. And you should know which anti arrhythmic drug causes thyroid abnormality. Just now we have discussed that is the amidurone. So what is this amidurone? It is a class 3 anti arrhythmic drug used in the treatment of your ventricular arrhythmias and they are also used in certain supraventricular tachyarrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. So this amidurone, let me tell you, it contains almost 40 percentage of iodine. Right, and it is structurally similar to tetraiodothyronine, that is thyroxine, and it contains 40 percentage of the iodine. And in those individuals who ever are taking amidurone, 20 percentage of patients receiving the long term amid amidurone therapy, they have developed the thyroid abnormalities. Now, let me discuss in detail about this thyroid abnormalities. So, First question is, how does this amidurone causes hypothyroidism? So, it is containing 40 percentage of the iodine, right? And this amidurone, it is a highly lipid soluble drug. It gets con concentrated in the adipose tissue. It gets concentrated in the muscle, liver, lung, and as well as the thyroid gland. So, by getting deposited within the thyroid gland, it will prevent the thyroid hormone synthesis. The next question again, how does the amidurone cause hypothyroidism? One mechanism just now I have discussed that is it is a lipid soluble drug and it gets deposited in the thyroid gland. The other mechanism by which the amidurone will cause hypothyroidism is that you take the final step in the synthesis of your T3. Final step in the synthesis of T3 is peripheral conversion where T4 is converted into T3 in the presence of enzyme 5-D iodinase 
what this amiodarone will do? Amiodarone will cause the inhibition of the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. So in that way, your amiodarone will cause hypothyroidism. Now, this amiodarone induced thyroid disorders, we have two types. Number one, amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis is there and amiodarone induced hypothyroidism is also there. So amiodarone induced hypothyroidism, just now we have discussed. Now, let me take up the discussion of amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis. So how many types of amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis are there? There are two types. One is amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis type 1 and then type 2. Now what exactly is this type 1 and type 2? Let me take up now. So you take amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis type 1. See amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis type 1 will occur in those individuals who are having underlying thyroid pathology already. And what would be that underlying thyroid pathology? It would be an autonomous nodular goiter or the presence of the Graves disease. So in the individual who are having pre-existing thyroid pathology, amiodarone can induce thyrotoxicosis that is called AIT1. And how do you treat these patients? You need to give antithyroid therapy. Next, what is amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis type 2? See, AIT2, it results it is a result of amiodarone causing subacute thyroiditis, right, with release of preformed thyroid hormone into the circulation. So, what is the treatment for your AIT2? That is glucocorticoids. AIT1, antithyroid drugs. AIT2, that is your glucocorticoids. Next. What are the clinical findings in the newborn? Let me tell you, if a newborn individual develops hypothyroidism, the newborn is considered as a cretin. Now, in early stages, these are all the clinical manifestations in the newborn. That is persistent physiological jaundice, hoarse cry, constipation, somnolence and feeding problem. So, these are the clinical manifestations in a cretin. Then, what will be the clinical findings in the newborn in the later months if there is presence of hypothyroidism? First and foremost, very very important, there will be delay in the milestones. That is very important. So, Please remember, in the later months, these are all the manifestations that can be observed. Delayed milestones, dwarfism, coarse features, protruding tongue, broad flat nose, widely set eyes, sparse hair, dry skin, protuberant abdomen, pot belly with umbilical hernia, impaired mental development, retarded bone age and as well as the delayed dentition. So these are the clinical findings that you will see in newborn in the later months. Then. Followed by that, what are the clinical features in adults in early stages? In early stages, let me tell you, the clinical features include lethargy because the metabolism of the food substances does not occur. There will be constipation because gastrointestinal motility is reduced in patients with hypothyroidism. And cold intolerance, why is that? Because of decrease in the basal metabolic rate in patients with hypothyroidism. And there will be stiffness or cramping of the muscles. Then. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Why is that? That is because of the edematous fluid or edemat, edema in the carpal tunnel resulting in the compression of the median nerve and there will be also menorrhagia. So these are the clinical manifestations in early stages. Now if you take the clinical manifestations in late stages of patients with hypothyroidism that includes slowing the intellectual and motor activity, decreased appetite and weight gain, dry hair, skin and there will be hoarse voice and as well as deafness. So these are all the clinical manifestations in cretin that is in children and as well as in the adults. Now after having discussed about the clinical manifestations, what will be the cholesterol levels in patients with the hypothyroidism? See patients with hypothyroidism they cannot lyse the cholesterol. See thyroid hormone is basically required for lipolysis and if thyroid hormone is not there cholesterol cannot be lysed and that will result in the elevated cholesterol level, elevated triglyceride level, elevated LDL levels. And what will happen to your deep tendon reflexes in hypothyroidism? That is a very very important question. See deep tendon reflexes they are delayed. They will have a delayed deep tendon reflexes in patients with the hypothyroidism. Next. What will happen to the sodium status in patients with the hypothyroidism? Let me tell you, in patients with hypothyroidism due to fluid overload, there will be hyponatremia, right? This is a very important multiple choice question. Then, 
what will be the laboratory results to confirm the diagnosis of the hypothyroidism so you take in primary hypothyroidism your t3 t4 will be reduced but the tsh will be elevated whereas in secondary and tertiary hypothyroidism everything will be reduced your trh is decreased tsh is decreased t3 and t4 is also reduced where in secondary and tertiary hypothyroidism now having said about the diagnosis how do you treat these patients with the hypothyroidism so if you see the treatment what is your goal the goal in patients with the hypothyroidism is to restore the metabolic state with levothyroxine so you need to give t4 in these patients now and yes levothyroxine is nothing but your t4 that should be administered with monitoring of t3 t4 and as well as tsh and you have to remember that whenever you are giving levothyroxine it takes almost 6 weeks right it takes 6 weeks after dosing changes for tsh to equilibrate so it will take almost 6 weeks for an individual to get a response now which group of patients they require gradual dosing so that means gradual dosing means you have to start with low dose and then you have to step up the dose so gradual dosing is required in elderly individuals and as well as in patients with the coronary artery disease why because in patients with coronary artery disease if you give high dose of your thyroid hormone high dose of thyroid hormone will increase the heart rate but in patients with coronary artery disease there is decreased blood supply to the heart so at that time if you increase the heart rate there will be decreased supply and increased demand which can make the individual to land up in angina so in patients with coronary artery disease you have to give a minimal dose and then gradually step up and next thing is what is the treatment for the suprathyroid suprathyroid hypothyroidism see suprathyroid hypothyroidism is nothing but your pathology in the anterior pituitary or pathology in the hypothalamus so if there is a strong suspicion of suprathyroid hypothyroidism with a hypothalamic or pituitary origin then you need to give hydrocortisone along with the thyroid hormone okay so why because whenever there is pathology in the pituitary there will be also decrease in your acth once there is decrease in acth there can be decrease in steroids also so you need to give hydrocortisone along with thyroid hormone and in a patient with suprathyroid hypothyroidism what is that you have to monitor see in primary hypothyroidism you have to monitor the tsh but suprathyroid hypothyroidism t4 levels have to be monitored rather than the tsh right this is a very very important point please remember that okay next what is the timing of levothyroxine right when is that you have to give you have to give this levothyroxine early in the morning empty stomach right should be taken early in the morning empty stomach very very important point now the question is why levothyroxine should not be given with other drugs or vitamins or multivitamins what happens if you give levothyroxine with other drugs or vitamins or multivitamins so please remember the multivitamins calcium iron all these drugs they will decrease the absorption of levothyroxine so that is the reason why they should not be given with other drugs very very important point and what happens to the demand for thyroid hormone during pregnancy always remember during pregnancy the demand for the thyroid hormone will increase right the demand for the thyroid hormone will increase that is the reason why in a pregnant female with pre existing thyroid disorder or the family history of thyroid disorder you have to do a close monitoring of tsh and t4 that has to be done and lastly how is hypothyroidism during pregnancy that has to be treated see hypothyroidism during pregnancy should be treated with levothyroxine that is t4 with serum tsh goal to be kept in the lower reference range what is a normal uh, tsh value 0.5 to 5 milli units per liter so you have to keep it in the lower reference range whenever you are treating hypothyroidism during pregnancy now the serum tsh should be measured every four, sorry the serum tsh measure tsh should be measured at 4 to 6 week gestation 4 to 6 week gestation means that is around your first month or one and a half month then every 4 to 6 weeks until the 20 weeks of gestation so this is how the hypothyroidism during pregnancy has to be treated so this completes the discussion of this very important topic in endocrinology that is the hypothyroidism thank you very much